starting my own town, trading with my neighbors, and building my very own manor? Today I played the most laid back medieval city building game out there. I played 100 days of foundation. After searching for so long, I had finally found the perfect location to settle a village in these new lands. The area was broken down into territories. Unfortunately, I didn't own any of them, but I did have enough gold to purchase one. This territory came equipped with a bunch of trees, some berry bushes, and a few rocks. Honestly, what else do you need? I had a great feeling about this territory. Everything was perfect. I even surveyed a bit more and found out that the land was super fertile. Well, there's nothing wrong with this area. Let's get down our village center. I ended up placing it right between the rocks and the berry bush. This seemed pretty ideal because I wanted to make sure that I was able to get to both without having to travel too far. 10 villagers who were traveling with me had arrived at the town center. Well guys, we got a lot to do. Before giving any official orders, I had talked to all of the villagers to see what their aspirations were for the village. I then checked out the villager list. This had everybody's name and their jobs on it. I even found a tool to manage our trade relationships with our neighbors, as well as one to manage our technology. There were also a couple others, but they weren't very useful, at least for the time being. I was now familiar with how I was going to manage my village. It's time to start construction. The first building that I had my villagers build was who would have guessed it? The Builder's Hut. The hut itself was constructed of very little wood. This meant that it was very easy to put up, but it could also be taken down just as easily. I ended up assigning three villagers the role of builder. This was going to be their profession from now on. Oh nice, they get their own outfits. It was now time to build a lumber camp. Really quickly, before that though, I need to mark which trees can be cut down. So I did exactly that. I zoned off a whole bunch of trees, stating that these could be the ones that get knocked down. I also included the berry bushes in that zone. I then found a location for my very first lumber camp. I ended up choosing this spot because it was right between the town center and the forest that the lumberjacks would be working in. My builders immediately got to work. They had to clear out one tree before building the lumber hut. Well, well, the hut's not even built yet and it's already taking out trees. I'm not surprised. As soon as it finished, I had assigned three lumberjacks to start working there. Their job was to chop down all of the trees in the zoned location. I figured that sooner or later we were going to run out of trees. So I ended up placing down a forester right next to the lumberjack hut. The forester should hopefully be able to plant enough trees to make up for what the lumberjacks cut down. At least I mean I hope they do. As the forester was constructing, I had started mapping out a reforestation area. This is the zone that the forester would replant all of the trees in. Once that was done, I moved on to placing my very first gathering hut. The location that I selected for it was right next to the berry bushes that were in my territory. I think it's pretty self-explanatory why I placed it there. It was so interesting to watch the construction of the forester. It started off with just a frame, and then it filled in from there. I assigned one of my citizens to the job, and we were set to go. The gathering camp had also just completed. I then made three villagers foragers. They immediately started heading towards the hut to get to work. As each one came over, a path to the gatherer's hut became more and more visible. I also discovered that the lumber camp was giving off an undesirable effect, so no houses would want to be built near it, which made sense. Since we were now gathering a decent amount of food, I had to have a place to store it. It was now time to build a granary. After spending quite a bit of time finding the perfect position to place it at, I had finally gave the order to start construction. There did happen to be one little issue though. I didn't have any stone. Now you might be thinking, why is that important? Well, the granary requires stone to build, so we need some. I immediately ordered that a stone cutter be built right next to the only rocks in our territory. I also had to make sure that I clearly communicated that these rocks were able to be mined. So I added them to the extraction zone. Since I ordered the granary to be built first, I now had to move the priority up for the stone cutter. So I did that, and then the builders got to work. They were now focused on the stone cutter instead of the granary. As my trusty builder had finished off the build, I had decided it was time to assign some workers to the stone cutter. Unfortunately enough, there were no workers left. Everybody had a job. 
It's not every day that you hear someone complain about 0% unemployment. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more. I have to do what I have to do. I unassigned one lumberjack from their job, and then one builder. This freed up two spots, so I could now have two miners. I waited for these changes to take place, as I watched all of my villagers huddle at the town center. I honestly felt pretty bad for them, because we weren't able to construct any houses yet, so they had nowhere to go to rest, except for the middle of the village. After patiently waiting, I saw my very first miner get to work. We were now back in business. The granary is going to be built in no time. I was pretty satisfied with everything that was going on. Our village was now self-sufficient. We had a source of food, which I found a second one in one of the territories nearby, and we were now able to produce wood and stone. Now that's what I call hard work. My builders were carrying each stone over one by one. The granary was almost ready to be built. We only needed one more stone. Soon enough, that one stone had arrived. And then my builder started constructing the granary. This was probably one of the most complex buildings that we had in our whole village. That made me pretty happy though, because we were now able to construct stone buildings, or at least buildings with a stone base. When the granary finished, I ran into the same problem as earlier. I didn't have anyone to assign to work it. I unfortunately had to go back over to the lumber camp and fire one of the lumberjacks. I then was able to hire them at the granary. I had also then instructed the worker to store berries at this location. We were definitely expanding quite a bit. The only thing is, I don't have any housing for these poor citizens. I guess there really is only one thing to do. I started zoning off the area where I wanted my citizens to build their houses. This was pretty much just a way to communicate to them to build here. I did give them the freedom, however, to build them how they wanted. Before I had even finished off zoning the area, I saw my builders run over and start constructing homes. It wasn't long until the first house had finished. I was pretty happy about this because it now provided a space for some of my villagers to sleep. Before I knew it, the second home had also finished. The builders seemed to have this construction under control. So I ended up placing down a market stall. These can be used to sell food to the villagers. Since food distribution was pretty much handled, I figured that I would build a well. This allowed the villagers to come by and get water whenever they needed. Once this last house finishes, everybody in the village will now have food, water, and shelter, the basic survival needs. It seemed like the right time to invest in some new technology. So I ended up spending my money on decorations. Now this might seem like a very weird tech to invest in, but the better the village looks, the more willing people will be to stay. Well, it's time to prove that theory. I started decorating the village with a whole bunch of different random things. The first being some flowers. I placed them between two houses, which increased the happiness of the people who lived in them. As I was busy placing down my decorations, I got distracted by the market stall. I had to assign berries to be sent there so they could be sold. I also had to tell one of the foragers to quit their job and come work at the stall. I still didn't attract any new citizens, so we were still limited on what jobs could be worked. It's time to get back to decorating. I didn't hold back. I placed down as many decorations as I possibly could. This ended up being worth it. The happiness of my village rose to 75%. We could now take on some new villagers. After all of that beautification, I ended up placing down a sawmill. The spot that I picked for it happened to be in the extraction and reforestation zones, so I had to move them a little bit. I then unlocked warehouses. If I was going to be producing planks at the sawmill, I was going to need a place to store them. In addition to warehouses, I had also unlocked wooden bridges. I immediately found a location to place down my warehouse. This seemed like the ideal position to place it at because it was in between the sawmill and the stone mine. To be fair, the lumber camp wasn't too far away either. Wow, two people want to join the village. Of course, I accepted them as soon as I possibly could. Right when they joined, they immediately headed over to the marketplace to get some berries and then to the well to drink water. This fulfilled their basic needs. I then scouted around to see what jobs I could assign them to. The first one that I filled was Forager. I didn't want to have a lack of food in the village, especially if we're going to be growing even bigger. The second one was Builder. I needed to make sure that everything was being constructed in a timely manner. Ironically enough, my builders started working on two more houses for the new villagers. I then started to readjust the warehouse. I wanted to make sure that it was at the perfect position. With the warehouse not being the only thing that's new, I tried placing down a bridge. 
I wasn't actually going to build it, but I just wanted to see what the blueprints looked like. Well, more houses means that we need more decorations. Otherwise, the happiness levels are going to drop in the village. Now that should be good. After making sure that all of the houses were covered by some form of beauty, I headed back over to the warehouse to check its progress. I was honestly pretty frustrated. I didn't even realize it, but I didn't produce any planks yet. So I ended up removing one of the builders, the one that I had just gotten, and added them over to the sawmill. Finally, planks are on the way. As usual, I was busy making things look good. That's when two people wanted to join my village. I didn't even see them because I was so distracted. Finally, I was able to recruit them, and we now had two more workers. I got a little bit scared. I had noticed a random path heading into my village. I had no idea where this came from, until I had thought about it. This was a path that the new villagers had taken to get here. It was pretty funny though because they had created a pretty long trail. With the rate that our village was expanding at, I knew that I needed to increase the area that we could build houses in. I wanted to get an in-depth look on how the villagers were doing. So I clicked on one randomly and saw that all of their needs were fulfilled, except that they wanted two different foods. They were only 75% happy. This meant that if I wanted to reach 100% happiness in the village, I was going to need to have two different food types. Honestly, that sounds like a problem for later. 75% isn't bad. After what seemed like an eternity, the warehouse had finally finished constructing. I immediately assigned planks to it. I did realize something though. I didn't have anybody to work it. Well, at least I didn't think I had anyone to work it. Honestly, I'm not even going to question that. Four people had magically requested to join my village. I, of course, accepted them. The more help around here, the better. A new house was immediately being constructed to house the brand new villagers. This was great and all, but why were they building it in the middle of a path? This was cramping the aesthetic of the village. I ended up telling them that they couldn't build there, and I removed the structure that they had put up. Thankfully, I caught that one. While I was distracted with the lumber camp, out of nowhere, my builders did it again. They started building a couple of houses in the middle of the roads. I still wasn't feeling this, so I told them to stop. Finally, a semi-decent location. It wasn't long until the new houses were completely constructed. One of the houses was really long and the other one was just normal size. I wasn't that impressed. But hey, if we're going to be able to house more villagers, I'm not complaining. It seemed like my planks were taking forever to be made. So I checked out what was going on. Apparently, we were out of logs, so I paused work at the sawmill and focused on getting some more. I was planning on investing in a new technology when I realized something very important. I never named our village. From this point on, we will be known as the village of Vortia, as I am Lord Vortide. I was pretty hyped about naming our village that I completely had forgotten I was looking for a new technology. Well, I guess we'll be worrying about that later. One of the villagers had suggested that I started a trade route with one of our neighbors. This seemed like a great idea, but I had no idea how. And I also didn't know if we had enough resources. I started to look into it. In other words, I just started looking all over to see where I could start a trade route at. There we go. Uh-oh, I don't have enough resources to start any of these. Well, it looks like it's time to start producing planks again. I tried assigning a carpenter to the sawmill, but that was when I realized I didn't have any free villagers. So I had to free one up from the stonecutter camp. That was when I finally realized I never unlocked any of the new technologies. This made me head over to the progression screen and unlock fishing. I also noticed that I could unlock butchering. I had enough gold. I didn't really think that the villagers were ready for this though. One thing at a time. Right as I exited the progression screen, four new villagers had arrived at the town center. With no hesitation, I recruited all four of them and put them right to work. I guess I won't have to worry about not having enough carpenters now. We just unlocked fishing, so it was only logical to now build a fishing hut. I headed over to the nearest river and started to look for a good spot. I thought I had found a pretty good one until I had headed over to the new territory that I just bought and found another. This spot was a bit further away than the other one, but my villagers didn't have to cut through a forest to get here, so I wasn't complaining. Right when I found the perfect location, I placed down my very first fisher's hut. I noticed that my villagers were building yet another house. This made me want to expand the housing zone just so they had a bit more space to build. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to expand it by much. 
You know what they say, something's better than nothing. With my new fisher hut under construction, I decided to assign fish to the granary. Once we finally start catching some, we'll be able to store them. I checked the finances of Vortia. It said that we lost 97 gold last month, and we made zero. This was horrible. The good thing is, now I have the motivation to start grinding for that trade route. That's right, get sawing that wood. Weirdly enough, it looked like the fisher's hut was never constructed. I was pretty confused by this because I made it one of our top priorities. Hmm. I guess it's not the end of the world, but these villagers need to learn to listen to their lord. Since we were using up so much wood, I decided to expand the reforestation area by a little bit. This way, I would be able to place down another lumber camp and harvest more trees, thus providing more wood. Oh yeah, and I added the fish to the extraction zone. As the new trees were being planted, I placed down my second lumber camp. Once this thing gets up and running, we'll surely have enough wood then. It had been a while since we last decorated the village. I started scouting out some potential locations to place down some decorations. Some of them didn't work out though. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to turn to the old reliable, the flower bush. You could put these flower bushes absolutely anywhere, and they always look good. I guess that explains why we have so many in the village. Well, well, what do you know? We start tidying up the place, and three new villagers arrive. What a coincidence. It must have been fate. These three villagers arrived right after the second lumber camp had finished building. I did a quick sweep of our resources, and it appeared that we had over 200 berries. This was the most of any resource that I had. I then realized that I had around 19 planks. This was great because I needed 20 to start our very first trade route. Come on, we're so close. After waiting around for what seemed like forever, I finally had over 20 planks. It's now time to trade with our neighboring village, Northberry. The only information that I really had on them was that they were located in a deep, thick forest and they were welcoming to all strangers. I'm really hoping that we learn a lot more about them now with this new trade route that we have. We now had a friend to actively exchange goods with. Now I just gotta decide what I wanna trade. It was pretty obvious that Northberry liked planks. After all, that is how we established our trade route with them. So I ended up saying after we have five planks in our inventory, we could sell the rest. I was thinking that we needed to store a lot more planks. But we were just gonna see how things go and roll with the number five for now. There weren't any buildings that really required planks for building, just yet at least. I was very proud of our village. We had established our very first trade route, and we would now be able to start getting some income instead of losing gold every month. The elders in my village suggested that I build a manor. This was honestly a great idea. I would be able to enact any mandates and policies from this building. This is gonna be a great spot for the villagers to come to if they ever have any issues with things going on in the village. It's going to provide them with a way to come and talk to me face to face. All right, let's decide where I'm gonna build this manor. There were quite a few building blocks that we could use, so I was gonna need a whole bunch of space. Well, that little patch of grass isn't gonna work. I started to look beyond our city. We had everything established in a small little area. It only made sense that the manor of royalty would be off by itself on a whole bunch of land. The area that I ended up rolling with was right above the stone cutter. There was a huge amount of open grassland that I could utilize for a giant building. Honestly, as I started to think about it though, I didn't know if I really had enough resources to build such a huge manor. I guess we'll just have to gauge it as we go. I selected the very first part of our manor, the rustic hall. This would serve as the main room for my manor. After that, I planned out a doorway. We were gonna have to get inside somehow. I then moved on to the chimney. A manor wouldn't be complete without one. Even though it costed me extra resources, it was worth placing down. Finally, the last crucial piece, the rustic tower. I tried seeing where it would look best. I ended up settling with the back right corner of my house, a little bit further than where the chimney was at. I wanted to add on at least one more little touch. So I tried placing down another chimney. All right, we're not doing that. Let's just go ahead and place down some decorations, the ones that we've been using all around the village. I was first considering adding a couple benches in front of the house, but that wasn't gonna do it. I then remembered about the flower bushes. Now that's what I call some good decorations. The manor was ready to be moved into position. At least it was until I had accidentally destroyed the blueprints. You have got to be kidding me. 
I ended up having to rebuild the whole manor. This was a little bit annoying, but since I had just built it, I knew exactly where the pieces went. Okay, let's just hope that we don't delete the blueprints again. I ended up moving the manor directly into the middle of all of the grassland. This seemed like a good place for it to be. I knew that a trail would develop directly to it, but I was a little bit concerned if it was going to go to the front door or the side. I really hope that the villagers figure it out. I then moved the flower bushes until they were perfectly placed. Things were looking good, but I still felt like I was missing something. So I started placing down some rope fences on the side of the manor which had no tower. This was going to be a good little area for me to put any bushes or benches or whatever I could think of. That is exactly what I ended up doing. I placed down one wooden bench. This was honestly a lot of open space for just one bench. But hey, I'm sure someone will use it. Last but not least, I ended up placing down a marker to indicate where the villagers would wait when they want to come inside. Even though I did want my citizens to be able to come in and talk to me, I didn't want them to completely invade my privacy. Right before I ordered its construction, I had checked out how many materials I was going to be using. 29 planks? 27 stones? And 8 tools? That's going to drain me dry! Ah, uh, whatever. Let's do this. Right as I demanded the construction started, my villagers started making their way over. Oh god, he didn't go directly to the front door. It looked like a trail was developing, leading towards the back of my house. This was a little bit frustrating, but it didn't look terrible. Hey look, somebody's already using the bench. That's a positive. It also looked like there was a trail developing between the stonecutter's hut road and the one that led directly to my manor. Apparently, enough supplies had been brought in over to the manor to actually begin construction. So one of my builders started building away. They started with the stone base, which was pretty awesome looking. They then moved on to the wooden frames above the stone base. We're making good progress. This thing will be up in no time. Surely enough, as the manor was constructing, three more new villagers made their way over to the town center. Let's go, new recruits. Exactly what I needed. I officially welcomed them into the village and then immediately started looking where I could assign them to. I ended up putting one at the mine, one at the sawmill, and one at the warehouse. The manor was really coming together. The main room had already completed. As I was observing my beautiful house, a random person had wandered into our village. I really couldn't tell who this was, until I realized it was a trader. They were here to collect some goods, if we had anything to sell. I would have never expected it, but that bench that we had put right next to the manor was a lot more popular than I thought it was going to be. I'm pretty sure four different people had already sat on that bench. It hasn't even existed for more than a couple days. It was now my proudest day. The villagers had finished our manor. This was a huge achievement. With this governing hall up and running, we now unlocked the busy progression tier. This meant that we could now buy a whole bunch of new technologies. We had also unlocked the Labor, Kingdom, and Clergy progression packs. What this pretty much meant was our village is expanding, and we're going to expand faster than you'll ever imagine. I also noticed that I had a new interface to issue mandates from. I explored the options of discussing a levy. It seemed like I would get a pretty good amount of gold from the villagers, but I would also decrease their happiness by 30%. This didn't seem worth it. I could also promote a villager to a higher status. There really wasn't a reason to do this now though. There was no space for nobility yet. With all of these changes going on, I agreed to decorate the village a little bit more. I wanted to keep all of the villagers happy. That was when I was informed that our village had caught the attention of three estates of the realm. They all expected me to build a monument for them. This wasn't going to happen, at least not for all three. I started looking at them and it seemed like one was religious, one was labor, and one was military. I ended up going with the military estate. This one seemed the most cool. Plus, I wanted to get some guards around here, in case we ever have to deal with any enemies. While I was distracted looking at some of the new technologies that I could purchase, a random horseman had approached my manor. A bunch of fishermen were looking for a builder to construct a bridge. They were hoping that we had someone in the village who was capable of doing this. Well, since Vortia does have some of the most gifted villagers in all of the world, I guess we could spare one builder to help out with this project. So I ended up sending over a level 2 builder to help them out. I ended up gaining 15 influence from this as my builder was able to successfully blueprint and build a bridge. Another random horseman had ended up in my doorstep. That was when I had found out that it was a message from the kingdom. 
They recognized that we were doing well as a village and gifted us some gold. I really liked the progress that we were making. I didn't want it to stop there. So I started to look at potentially building a church. This was something we had just unlocked. Sadly enough, this was a very expensive thing to do. So I deemed it not possible at the current moment. After scrapping the blueprints, I noticed three new villagers heading towards the town center. There was also a random villager who was sitting at the manor front door. He informed me that the elders were in full support of our village. They gifted us a couple of tools to help out with construction. I had initially thought we were only getting three new villagers. I was wrong, there were actually four. Our village was growing so fast and so quickly that I had three different quests just waiting to be completed. One of them was to increase the diversity of food we had, the second was to plan the aspirations for our village, and the third one was to promote a villager to a commoner. I happily took on all three quests. I then made my way over to the fisher's hut which was never constructed. This thing was taking absolutely forever, so I ended up destroying it and placed down another one in a different location in hopes that this one might actually get built. I noticed a quest that my villagers had said I already almost completed. They wanted one of every single decoration placed in the village. Apparently, I was only missing a rope fence. It was weird because I had some of those placed down in my manor, but I guess that didn't count. As quickly as I possibly could, I ended up placing down the rope fence. This fulfilled the requirements for the quest. I had just welcomed in a decent amount of villagers. Since I was so distracted with everything that was going on, I didn't assign them jobs. So I ended up checking the granary, warehouse, and stone camp to see if there were open jobs. At each one of those locations, there was. Not anymore, there aren't. I ended up filling all of the jobs in the entire village, and we still had some unemployed villagers. It looks like it's time to construct some new buildings. I immediately headed over to the progression page where I unlocked butchering. This gave me the hunting building as well as the butchering building. Well, that just hit two birds with one stone. We needed to get more food diversity and I also needed to create some more jobs. Unlocking butchering accomplished both. I also grabbed some new decorations from the progression page. I wanted to find the perfect location to place down my very first hunter. Unfortunately enough, I wasn't able to put it in any of the forests nearby. The reason being is that I didn't own the territory that they were sitting on and I also didn't want to put it near the forest right next to all of my houses. So, it was time to make a big decision. We needed to purchase another territory. I ended up buying one that bordered the two that I already had. It contained the trading path in it as well. Now that's a perfect spot for a hunter's hut. Since we now were going to have some boars, I needed to place down a butcher's shop. I knew the perfect location to place one. Except, it was right on top of the builder's hut. As I was trying to place down another builder's hut so I could replace the one that was currently up, two new villagers came to my village to be recruited. After taking a second to recruit them, a random horseman had also arrived in my town center. I knew that this was going to be a distraction, so I ended up placing down my builder's workshop before I interacted with him. I then ended up removing my old one and finally talked to the horseman. It was the fishermen from earlier. They were thankful about us building the bridge but they wanted us to trade our stone for their fish. This was a little bit annoying because we did help them out and I was expecting to get some fish for free, but I guess I'll trade the stone. I do have a surplus. I could finally place down the butcher's shop. This was the perfect location for it as it was aesthetically pleasing. Talking about aesthetics, I had unlocked a decent amount of new decorations and boy were they cool. There was this really awesome stone archway, which was a little bit short, but still awesome and then this cool looking water pond thing. Unfortunately, I needed some marbled stone to be able to build it, so I couldn't actually construct it right now. I headed back to my progress tree because I wanted to be able to see what else I could unlock. That was when I finally noticed the other tabs. There were so many different things that I could buy, new technologies and new items. Since I had so much extra stone, I decided that it would be a good time to try and sell some of it. Unfortunately, our current trading neighbor wasn't interested in buying it. I ended up checking out if I could trade berries. It seemed like our neighbors were interested. Every berry after our 200 in the stockpile, I was willing to trade. I made this very clear to the citizens, as I didn't want them to oversell our berries. I gave up hope on building the fishing hut. It just wasn't being constructed. At the same exact time, I unlocked the notable tier. 
In other words, I just unlocked a lot more technologies and items. The butchery finished constructing. I assigned only one of my villagers to work there, even though I had two more I could assign. The reason being is that we weren't producing boars quick enough in order for the butchery to stay open. It just didn't make sense to me to have two people working there when they couldn't even work. After that, I ended up placing down another hunter's hut. This was to ensure that every single villager could get meat and berries. While the hut was building, I ended up marking out a little area where they could go hunting. This wasn't ideal because it's where we were chopping down trees, but it'll have to do. I couldn't stop thinking about all of the different discoveries we could make, so I headed back into the progression screen and ended up buying the tax office. I then immediately tried to place one down. Hmm, why can't I find it anywhere? No matter where I was looking, the tax office wasn't there. That was until I checked the manor. I had the option to build some additional add-ons to the manor. One of them was the tax office, what I just unlocked. There ended up being a couple new rooms as well. This could be interesting. I played around with the different rooms and tried making a little tax house. I ended up coming up with something super simple because I didn't want to spend too many resources. That should work. It was pretty cool seeing the tax office near my manor. Better yet, what if I just attach it to the side of the house? So that's exactly what I ended up doing. I placed it down right next to the manor. This thing's got a lot of potential. The more I add on, the bigger it's gonna get. I then headed to the granary and swapped out the storage of boars for meat. Each boar gives us multiple meat, so it only makes sense to make storage for what we're gonna have more of. I then started laying out a church. After looking around for a potential location for it and seeing how much it costed, I decided not to build it. Since I ended up not building the church, I did want to give my citizens something. So I ended up placing down some more decorations near their housing. It was now time to place down a second market stall. We had enough food between our fish and meat to start distributing it. I ordered the construction to begin. I also realized that I built a brand new tax office and I didn't assign anybody to work at it. When I did try to assign someone to work there, I forgot that I could only hire a commoner to that building. So then I tried to promote a villager to a commoner. Unfortunately, nobody was ready to be promoted. Well, that stinks. I then ended up unlocking the stonemason hut, and of course, I placed one down, right behind the stone camp. As I was peacefully watching my villagers, I had noticed that quite a few of them were asking for service. That meant that they wanted a church. Honestly, I should have just built this a lot earlier. I don't know why I delayed it. So I finally found the perfect spot to place down a church. I even ordered the construction of a decorative bench right in front of it. This is going to be the best church in all of the lands. It really was, after I had found out that I also needed to place down a bell tower. I tried scouting out the different locations where the bell tower looked the best. I ended up going with the back right, as usual. Alright, let's get this thing built.